Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Iran breaches the 2015 nuclear deal. This comes after Tehran warned it would breach the terms of the deal if European leaders did not act to prevent tough sanctions being imposed by the U.S. We've got to look at what might be next. But first, reckless drivers taunt Detroit police and post videos online of themselves blocking traffic and doing donuts on the freeway. What officers plan on doing to stop the dangerous activity. All right, well, topping our news at noon, we're talking about the weather. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Evrod Kassaby, and if you've been outside, you know that's pretty hot, and it's only going to get hotter. Let's take a look at temperatures right now across Metro Detroit. In Ann Arbor, the temperature is 83 degrees, and then over in Mount Clement, 78 degrees this afternoon. And in Detroit, man, oh man, it is 82 degrees right now. And as we turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Rue, I understand that it's only going to get hotter from here, huh? We are going to be flirting with 90 degrees all week, including today getting the week started with a very hot bang. We have 82 at Metro 83 Ann Arbor and in Howell. It's 83 Flint, 82 in Pontiac, just slightly cooler here on the east side due to a little southeast wind. It should turn southwest and drag in warmer air for all of us. Add in the humidity and it is a couple of degrees warmer. 85 the heat index right now in Ann Arbor, 86 down in Monroe. So the heat and humidity building a little bit today. 87 degrees by 2 o'clock and again highs near 90 degrees. Could be an isolated flare up or two from the heat and humidity but you can see just looking here clouds and radar showing more trouble elsewhere. So we're sort of surrounded with some wet weather but not a whole lot happening. It's going to be a very warm week not only today but tomorrow you add the Humidity feels tropical and scattered to severe weather coming your way as well. It's all in the seven day Everod coming up. All righty, Brandon, thank you. As of right now, parts of Livingston County are under this boil water advisory. Now, this affects those who get their water from Livingston Community Water Authority. And as of right now, there's no word on how long this boil water advisory is going to remain in effect, but you can head on over to click on Detroit.com. We've got all the details for you there. In Detroit now, the Fisher Building is getting some much needed funding. The owners announced a $36 million loan to help continue preservation work on the historic building. The new loan will cover existing debt. It'll help preserve the beautiful art and architecture inside. This building was built back in 1928. The Fisher Building has faced years of water damage and crumbling plaster as crews have worked to preserve and renovate the building over the years. And now to a local 4 News update. The search is on for this man who's wanted in connection to a deadly shooting out of Pontiac. Oakland County Sheriff's deputies are looking for 29 year old Keandre Say, and they believe that he is the person responsible for shooting and killing a 40 year old Pontiac man. If you know where this guy could be, please contact the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Now at noon, the man found guilty of nearly beating a Dearborn doctor to death has just learned his fate. Emmanuel Vaughn will spend the next one to four years behind bars. It was back in October. Vaughn left the doctor unconscious after he punched him in the face and stabbed him 16 times. This morning in court, the elderly victim told the court that he will never be the same. I now know firsthand how it is to be scared every day, to not sleep every night, to be easily startled, and to remain in ongoing chronic pain. The doctor also told the court that he wouldn't be alive today if his family didn't check on him when he didn't go home after the assault. So it's the video that has a lot of people talking online. Drivers doing donuts on the Lodge Freeway, making it impossible for other drivers to get by. This was over the weekend. Local Force Larry Sproul joins us now from the Detroit Police Headquarters with a look at what Chief Craig is saying about all this. Good afternoon, Ed Rod. Chief Craig says this would not be allowed on the Lodge or any of Detroit streets. Now, we did talk to drivers about this video. <laughs> Everyone is talking about this video and is making its rounds on social media. Take a close look. You can see several cars spinning out of control and doing donuts on the lodge. Others watched some recording it. This video is now viral. Oh my God. Wow. 
I mean, lots of cars, too. How you going to shut down the expressway doing donuts? Drivers everywhere are asking the same question. They have nothing to do. They got nothing, else to, nothing do. to do. Nothing to do. Nothing to do, period. Yeah. Right. And they find that it's some form of fun. You got to be some laws against that. Now, the video quickly caught the attention of Detroit police. They announced on Twitter they arrested a 25 year old male out of Canton for reckless driving in Rouge Park. You can see signs of someone making donuts in the street in this picture. Chief Craig released this statement. We are not going to tolerate this blatant disregard for public safety in our city. More to come. And that more to come will be at a news conference here at headquarters. We are expecting Chief Craig to talk about this issue this afternoon at 1. You can count on us to be there. Reporting at Detroit Police Headquarters this afternoon, Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, thank you. In the meantime, an investigation is underway on Detroit's east side after a man was left in critical condition because of a hit and run crash. This happened just a little after three this morning, right on Meringue and Fordham. Police say the SUV blew a stop sign, hitting the other vehicle, and the suspects ran away on foot. Meanwhile, police across the state are going to be increasing patrols for the 4th of July holiday. They're going to be out looking for drivers who have been drinking. That holiday campaign starts today and it ends on July 14th. Shifting gears a bit, though, it is likely that car and truck owners here in Michigan are going to be seeing their insurance rates going up. Fees paid to the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association help pay for medical care for people who are catastrophically injured in crashes. Well, as of today, those fees are going up $28 per vehicle. Now, normally insurance companies pay that fee, but the law allows it to be passed on to policyholders. Reforms to Michigan's no-fault insurance system, which were recently approved in Lansing, do not take effect until about a year from now. Tensions in the Persian Gulf are increasing this afternoon with Iran making moves in violation of the landmark 2015 nuclear development agreement. Iran announced that it has now accumulated more enriched uranium that was allowed under the agreement. A United Nations watchdog group has confirmed that development, Iran saying it would increase its uranium enrichment in response to U.S. economic sanctions. Iran's foreign minister says Iran could roll back production if European nations came up with methods of getting around the U.S. sanctions. President Trump has returned to the White House after a four day visit to Asia highlighted by a history making, if brief, side trip to North Korea. Mr. Trump met with North Korean leader Kim Jong un at the heavily fortified demilitarized zone and agreed to revive talks on the North's nuclear program. Richard Engel explains why significant doubts linger regarding the future of the negotiations. Well, we know President Trump enjoyed his impromptu summit with Kim Jong-un in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. But until now, we didn't know what the North Koreans actually thought, but they just released a propaganda video. And unlike a lot of North Korean propaganda, which is very aggressive toward the United States, often very threatening, this one was absolutely gushing, praising the meeting, showing Kim Jong-un escorting President Trump across the demarcation line that separates North and South Korea showing him as a gracious host. The video described the meeting as going beyond expectations, that it shocked and moved the world. An accompanying article said that it was as if a mysterious force was bringing these two leaders together and driving good relations, that there was now an opportunity to rewrite history and start a new chapter. So this was an absolute ringing endorsement of this meeting. But critics say that President Trump was simply coddling a tyrant, using this for a photo op, for a campaign endorsement for himself, and that North Korea hasn't actually taken any real steps to slow down or reduce its nuclear program. Richard Engel, NBC News, Seoul. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, protesters in Hong Kong take over a legislative chamber. We'll tell you the reason why they're hitting the streets. And then closer to home, Texas investigators are trying to figure out what caused this small plane to crash, killing 10 people. Are they any closer to determining the cause? 